bring him to the dialogue table. In the villages, they have physical fight. But the cities have become so intelligent, they bring everything into the table and talk and solve the problems. Let us have a dialogue. <laughs> that was a dialogue, but they do not know the dialogue is also something from the borrowed knowledge. Hence, with all these dialogues in the world, there was no peace, but only pieces. Peace and pieces. Peace, P A C is Shanti. P I E C is -E mutton chops. The people who are going to the table also. The, I don't find much difference which they call it as physical fight in the with the illiterate people <coughs> whom they call illiterate from the apart from the bookish knowledge. And the people who are bookish knowledge who call themselves literate. This is a 26th story from the Zen Flesh, Zen Bones, written by Paul Reps, trading dialogue for lodging. Provided he makes and wins an argument about Buddhism with those who live there, any wandering monk can remain in a Zen temple. In Japan or in the Buddhist monasteries, even when I was traveling also, I will always look for a Jain temple or a uh, uh, Sardarji's Gurudwara, where they allow you to stay for three days. Three days food is free. So I also stayed while traveling. <laughs> but here they say, when, you, when I went, they did not have this argument. They just gave me the place to stay. It was just a room. We had to sleep on the floor. I didn't think uh, they even gave me a mat also. I had to carry what little blanket I had in my back and I was sleeping. Here they say, if you wanted a place to stay, you have to have a dialogue with the people who are staying inside. And if you win the dialogue, you can have a stay, other you have continue. In the sense, win a dialogue in the sense, you have to be truthful. You have to melt with that place. If you melt with the place, you will stay also, it doesn't sting. Because you will not carry your borrowed knowledge to make the other person, other place think it is bad. That was the thinking, that nothing more. When you roam, act like a Roman and go beautifully to any temple and you smile and you do a beautiful namaskara and you sing a bhajan. There is no more of dialogue. There is no need for a competition. Anybody, any temple will give you a place. But they say another temple three days because these monks are asked to continuously travel. Like Mahatma Gandhi decided when he came from South Africa, he said, to understand India, Bal Gangadharna Tilak said, Gandhi, to understand India, and Gandhi said, yeah, he understood. But I will be walking on barefoot to all over, all over India to understand India. <laughs> yes. If our corporators or Panjait members, MLS, MPs have understood that one, where there is Daridre, where there is need to borrow money from the World Bank and make us a destitute country, an orphan country. The walking is very important. So here what they say is you melt, when you melt, when you go with a mind empty, whatever people say, you do not have to think this or that. So when you go there, argument, you have to have a dialogue with the people inside the temple and if you win, you get a place to stay. Because when you stay, they are not frightened because you will contribute wherever you go. You will immediately Go, take the broom, you clean up the place. You will not ask, think whether they'll ask you. You will make sure that you provide something back to them. Yes, you sing a song, whatever you wanted. Place is provided. If he is defeated, he has to move on. In a temple in the northern part of Japan, two brother monks were dwelling together. The elder one was learned, but the younger one was stupid and had but one eye, a wandering monk came and asked for lodging, properly challenging them to a debate about the sublime teaching. The elder brother tried that day from much studying, tired that day from much studying, told the younger one to take his place. Go and request the dialogue in silence. He cautioned, so the young monk 
and the stranger went to the shrine and sat down. Shortly afterwards, the traveler rose and went to the elder brother and said, your younger brother is a wonderful fellow. He defeated him. Relate the dialogue to me, said the elder brother one. Well, explain the traveler. First, I held up one finger representing Buddha, the enlightened one. So he held up two fingers signifying Buddha and his teachings. I held up three fingers representing Buddha, his teachings and his followers, living the harmonious life. Then he shook his clenched fist in my face, indicating that all three came, come from one realization. Thus he won and so I have no right to remain here. With this, the traveler left. Where is that fellow? asked the younger one, running to his elder brother. I understand you want the debate. Won nothing. I'm going to beat him up. <laughs> Tell me the subject of the debate, asked the elder one. Why, the minute he saw me, he held up one finger insulting me by ins insinuating that I have only one eye. Since he was a stranger, I thought I would be polite to him. So held up two fingers, congratulating him that he has two eyes. Then the impolite wretch held up three fingers, suggesting that between us, we only have three eyes. So I got mad and started to punch him. But he ran out and that ended it. <laughs> it's a dialogue between uh, the traveler came. And as per the Buddhist system, you have to have a dialogue. The elder brother who was much learned was very tired. So he asked his younger brother who was stupid in every place to give one learned person. And the stupid yin and the positive and negative. Like, they are thinking he is stupid, but basically he's not stupid. Because his strength can frighten the bad evil outside. Because the learned person will be too soft to understand the wickedness of the opposite person. They have a dialogue. The traveler who was very learned, he thought in silence what the younger one said as some truth. So he tried to leave when the elder brother asked the younger one, the younger one told him a different story. Both have got two different stories. So when business people come to Rakham school, they look at this place, oh, this is a very beautiful place to do business. So if you do like this, like this, like this, oh, this Rakham Guruji is a big businessman, cunning businessman. Look, huh? innocently cunning. This is a, this, if you, if, we, if you try to find out how Rakham Guruji is doing this business, we can do it in a much bigger way, like many, many NGOs are trying to do massive advertisement campaign and trying to pull money from the CSR funding and zero, zero work has been done. CSR funding has been looted and raped and molested and destroyed. CSR means corporate social responsibility, sir, is not reaching anywhere because many cunning business people entered in the name of social service and registered trust and they were running. <laughs> No hard labor. So businessman comes and thinks Akum Guruji is doing business. A social worker, Samudaya Seva Martha. Social worker comes and he looks and he says, Oh, this is very good Seva, Samudaya Seva. But there is no God or uh, dog also. He is not a God. He is not even a dog. Stupid. I don't respect God and dogs and all. I respect the work he is doing. Social service is very good because there is poverty. The third person will come, is a spiritual man. He looks at Rakam Guruji and his work and he says, Oh my God, this is God's work. Shashtanda Namaskar itself is not sufficient. I will just melt he himself is God in God's form. What godly work? Look at the children all in God's form. Look at the work in God's form. Three different people thinking three different ideas. The mind thinks on three different areas. But some, one of my senior students, <coughs> Uh, uh, whenever uh, I was running the school, uh, former chief secretary, J. Alexander and state minister for tourism under SM Krishna government, uh, uh, J. Alexander sir passed away recently. He, he came and told me, why you have to keep so many workers, allow the senior students to run different, different departments, let them also learn. Why you want to pay money to outsiders? Let them learn it. So we try to put children in different, different departments. One girl called Tara, she was in the reception and then we slowly she started taking control of the finance department. So one day her father told her, 
look look this is very good business huh if the, what your guruji is doing nothing my daughter is doing everything huh? she knows everything huh? this guruji is stupid if we have little money if we take a building we also will run and people will come and give like this <laughs> Another one group from uh, Lakshmi Puram, uh, Lakshmi Puram, uh, Lakshmi Puram, Srinivasa Puram, border of Andhra Pradesh. Their uncle came because four girls were with me. Their uncle came and said, "Oh, this is very good because all the four uh, girls were in many many different departments running." Uncle came and said, "Uncle was little uh, partially blind, so he had got a cunning mind. So he came and told, 'Oh, come children, we will also start like this and.'" <laughs> And then we will become like Rakum Guruji. The moment you come, you are not feeling of melting and allowing the children to grow and finding something good. Your mind is corrupted. In that corruption, you start thinking, this is Buddhist philosophy, this Hindu philosophy, this is Jaina philosophy, this Christian philosophy. Read any philosophy, but the truth is on you, only when you practice. When you practice, when you move inside, what I am trying to tell is any anything, it's not that you look at Rakam Guruji and you start, but your mind is Chanjala, then you may not win. Hence, they were not winning. <laughs> but you don't have to look at Rakam Guruji alone. You sit together, whatever fight, whatever coming from the mouth of the wife is gospel truth, mouth of your husband is gospel truth. Both together, if you understand, you can create much beautiful things, not outside alone, right inside. Any senior students ran away from here, listening to others. But if they were over here together, we could have made it better. Outside, they were very weak. Inside, we could have been more strong. Try to be together. Try to look into you. That looking, that I, what I said is physical exercise is very important. Never, never neglect. Anytime you do it, don't forget. The moment you forget the physical land, the land becomes hard, water runs away. Soil erosion happens. When, when the land is tilled and you take care of the land, you can see all the greenery and fruits and vegetables and birds. All the whole world comes. You don't have to invite the birds to come to your land. Like that, if your physical body is tilled and exercise, warming up and stretching exercise, if you do it, the whole world of Birds, beautiful flowers, fruits, trees start growing in land. The dialogue, what I'm telling is, our dialogue, your dialogue. Not about this dialogue and that. If you're together, understanding your body first. If you understand and love your body, the whole world will understand you. You don't have to understand anybody. <laughs>